Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. And now for a look at the local news. Rubbish collectors on the north side had an unpleasant surprise this morning when one of the containers they were collecting proved to be holding the remnants of a local woman who apparently had been mutilated and dismembered with a power saw. Good morning. What the hell are you doing here? Uh, well, I slept in here. It's a lot quieter than that building site, and uh, nobody wakes you up uh, getting rid of... Uh, Dead bodies. Welcome back. So you've just heard the trailer for disc number 34 of the 88 Films Italian Collection series. This is Touch of Death from Lucio Fulci, released in 1988. So this is a later date Fulci title. Um, we're in like the last five, six years of his life at this point. Uh, and he was still churning out movies like a motherfucker. So, uh, you know you're in safe hands when you've got... Well, you say that and then you watch some of the later ones and you go, where are these safe hands? Um, so, yeah, let's find out what it says on the 88 Films uh, blurb for it. It says, The financially strained and increasingly desperate Lester Parsons, uh, played by 50s matinee star Brett Halsey, concocts a brilliant get-rich-quick scheme. Cruise the Lonely Hearts adds for rich women to fleece. Too bad then that Lester's also a psychotic cannibal who enjoys mutilating these lovelorn souls via his trusty chainsaw and using their flesh for his dinner. When a copycat killer threatens to bring him down, Lester must do all he can to prevent the new killer's sloppy work from ruin ruining them both. From the Godfather of Gore, Lucio Filci, comes this darkly humorous gore-fest, which sits proudly as a crowning achievement in the late master's latter career. Rediscover the morbidly dark sense of humour of this beloved maestro's of cruelty today, thanks to the stunning HD transfer from 88 Films. Special features on this one, a bit sparse, but you've got High definition Blu-ray 1080p presentation of the film sourced from the original negative, an uncompressed English soundtrack, uncompressed Italian soundtrack with English subtitles, and a, a little a, a little dock, reflections in a broken mirror, working with Lucio Fulci and making touches of death feature it with contributions from Michael DeAngelis and Marco Di Stefano. Um, this was region unlocked, so you can watch it wherever you are. And um, the picture format is HD 1080p 133.1. 
The audio format is LPCM Mono 2.0. The language, like it said earlier, is English and Italian with subtitles. And certification is 18 for this movie. The runtime, just over uh, an hour and 20 minutes, just under an hour and a half. Which, once again, thank you, Fulci. You always bless me when you do shit like that. It makes me very, very, very happy. This was one I knew absolutely zero about. I did not know that didn't have the foggiest about anything to do with Touch of Death. So, I have done some later filtry before. I did an episode ages ago where I was joined by a Doug Tilly and Jeff X Martin where we looked at Filchie's movies, we looked at Kenny's late 60s, early 70s output, we did his very early 80s output and then we did his very late 80s, very early 90s, still kind of the end of his career output as well. I've also covered with Ricky Morgan many years ago now, a Cat in the Brain, which is one of my favourite of his later works and that's why when 88 films obviously for selling points say Touch of Death sits atop his later day output no Cat in the Brain sits atop they ain't no movie as bonkers as Cat in the Brain hands fucking down it is just mental um, so yeah I I don't know where to begin with Touch of Death because there was moments in it where I was like that, this is Filchi, this is the Filchi I love, this is the Filchi I dig, this is the Filchi I want to see more of. And then there was other bits where I was like that, this feels like amateur hour, you know, behind and in front of the camera. It, 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 was, a, it was a weirdly inconsistent movie from start to finish. I mean, the premise is pretty much what's said there. We have this guy, uh, Lester, who... Uh, lives in a lovely house and is struggling because he keeps making bad bets and to cover his bad bets what he's decided to do is start cruising the Lonely Heart section getting involved with these rich uh, women who well, let's be honest are not the most attractive and that's how he seduces them and then he eventually kills them off after ruining them gets her money uh, eats them because he's a cannibal question mark uh, eats them and then moves on to the next one um, yeah I, I mean this one definitely definitely has a the, the kind of goofier more comedic Fulci at heart uh, that certainly did start to show later in his career where he just kind of felt himself I don't know the need to, to almost poke fun at what he was doing which is funny because when you read interviews about people that met him apparently he wasn't necessarily like that in person he could be quite bitchy uh, and Brett Halsey is fucking great in this movie he really does play this kind of malicious psychopathic serial killer who at the same time yeah, it reminded me actually a little bit of his mannerisms and the kind of weird campiness of him reminded me a little bit of uh, Matt Dillon's performance in that recent one The House That Jack Built the uh, Lars von Trier movie um, it kind of reminded me of that, like the way he, the way he performs in the movie is very reminiscent, um, but it's a, it's increasingly more bonkers and not necessarily in a good way. So the first woman that we see, he's uh, like a, I think she might think she's a bit of a model or a stripper or something, uh, even though she's well off. Uh, and then we move through a woman with weird facial and body hair. Which there's this prolonged willy or won't he kill her sort of thing that goes on, uh, with a satisfying conclusion to that. But when we get to the woman that can't sing an opera songs and she sings opera songs in her sleep, and even when she's been strangled to death, that's where I, I kind of started to think that maybe the joke had ran out of steam. And really, there are combinations of really gory graphics, special effects here, and just some shit effects as well that by 88 the ability to do better stuff was here and the movie looks cheap and I don't know if that's a sign of Filchi's inability to command the budget that he was commanding you know less than a decade before or whether or not that is you know basically his choice you know to cut corners and get a movie out so I, I'm unsure where that lands but the movie looks and feels quite cheap Cinematography doesn't have the flair that you would usually associate with a Filchi movie. Um, uh, but the acting was pretty good. Like uh, I like most of the acting in here. Brett Halsey, like I say, is definitely up there as the, the, the kind of MVP 
of the performance and he's he, overall he's a ton of fun there was a scene which made me I was about five minutes with tears rolling down my face where um, Lester decides to go and pay some money back to the bookies and he goes in and they're operating out this factory in this room with all these kind of whiskey barrels or wine barrels I would imagine all set up and there's a computer set up there and it kind of looks like this is not where you would have a computer set up this guy's on one of these old fashioned mobile phones the big giant cordless fuckers um, and then there's the <laughs> the effects department play a helicopter sound like oh the police are on to us and within three seconds they have basically lifted this computer to take out a computer from 1988 this thing doesn't have I mean it's all built in the monitor and the monitor's tiny that's not how they look you know all these things where you're looking at going this is just fucking ludicrous and the more I thought about that scene the more I couldn't stop laughing um, until tears were coming down the side of my face where I was like this is just nuts absolutely nuts almost as nuts as the cover art for this movie which kind of belies some sort of interesting spectral kind of I don't know some sort of maybe supernatural horror movie which this is definitely not and it's a classic testament to those amazing uh, Italian horror artwork for the cover sleeves that just don't look anything at all like the fucking movie don't even remotely reminisce uh, or resemble sorry the, the, the content of them but yeah, the, the story kind of goes on and it, it finishes kind of abruptly and I wasn't overly sold at the end even though it was very bonkers and very filchy. It just kind of doesn't work for me overall. I, I felt frustrated because like I say, certain kill sequences, I thought this is bitching. Certain bits of the humour definitely, definitely work for me and there were certain parts with Brett Halsey where I was like, this is primo filchy, this is what I expect. This is almost like the prototype cat in the brain here and I, I kind of really enjoyed that. But when you juxtapose it with jokes that are maybe not as funny as they could be or played so long that they are no longer funny and his character acting the way he does along beside that I, I just got the feeling that it, it kind of was trying trying very very hard to be funny and maybe missing the mark with a lot of it that I could feel myself kind of cringing a little bit um, at some of what I saw and it, it was kind of not frustrating but it was kind of like weirdly upsetting because Filchi's a director I hold in such high regard even though I know for a fact he's made shitloads of really bad movies I still always kind of lean back on the fact that you know he, for the most part he had a run of what 12 13 years where he was almost like consistently putting out banger after banger after banger of a title and you know like it's different and when, you, when you're looking at the sheer volume he put out that's when you're sitting there in awe of, you know, an actual maestro. And that's why I, you know, call him a maestro because I think he generally should be regarded that way. He was so far ahead of the curve and so far ahead of his time in a lot of respects that I always forget that his career went off the rails towards the end and it wasn't well and he was still trying to churn out these movies and his lack of interest shows. I don't know how much investment he has in this movie because it certainly feels like a bit of a damp squib and it just kind of trundled on and it's a painful reminder of his later day works and this is definitely better than some of the other ones that were out about the same time like circa 87 to 92 he was doing a lot of shit and um, this is definitely one of the better ones but it's nowhere near the quality of what this guy was putting out six years before that. You know what I mean? You look at 82, he's just come off the beyond. He's putting out New York Ripper. And, you know, that's the Fulci that I want to kind of remember. Not this one. Even though, like I say, Touch of Death has these little flashes, little flashes of, of, of Fulci genius that, that made me smile. Overall, it was a, it was a weirdly inconsistent, and just wholly unrewarding watch in total um, that's all I have to say about it uh, I did quite enjoy the, the featurette but once again this is another 88 films release where we could have had some more in here I don't know what you would have done but we could have had some more in here um, it kind of felt like maybe this was a bare bones one we'll see though the actual presentation of the movie fucking top notch um, the transfer is great really 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 good um, and I flipped between the English and Italian um, sound and the sound sounded great as well so the 
where they skimp sometimes elsewhere, they certainly put the money in there for this movie, and that's something that I will appreciate quite a bit. Uh, in terms of a grade for this one, uh, I didn't like it. I, I'm going to have to come in a 2.5 for this one. Uh, somewhere between didn't like it and liked it, 2.5 feels right. Um, and that's Touch of Death. Yeah, I was kind of hoping to enjoy it a bit more. It reads so much better in the blurb than it is to watch as a movie, although it does cover everything that happens in that movie. It's not mis-selling or misrepresenting anything.